Hi, and welcome in the next episode of building the PS01 synthesizer. Today, I wanted to focus on those. Those are four Rotary encoders that are gonna be used to change different functions and options in the synthesizer. Um, in this case, I need to solder them on a board and I have a small issue when it comes to wiring it up with the rest of the synthesizer and let's do some math to see where the problem is. So, the math is Xenon has only 20 GPIOs. But for all our peripherals, we need um, I squared S. Those are three pins. For the Trillis keyboard, which uses I squared C, that is two wires. The USB host is using the serial uh, protocol, so we need two more pins for that. That's two. And then our LCD needs five. So for what's left are the four encoders. And uh, each of the encoders needs two pins for the functionality of like or basically rotating and one more pin if you want to use the button that it's there. So it's basically four by three, so it's 12 pins for encoders. And yeah, when you sum all this up, it looks like we need 24 pins and yeah, we do not have 24 pins. So this is the problem. This is what we have to figure out to actually connect the encoders to um, the Xenon. And there are multiple methods and I want to go into them right now. This is a usual way of connecting encoders to a microcontroller. We basically connect the common pin to, uh, to 3v3 or 5 volts and then we have the outputs, the A and Bs, going straight into the microcontroller. What is very useful with this kind of combination is because we can use interrupts on the microcontroller. So every time any of the pins from like D0 to D3 changes its value, only then we're trying to calculate how much it was rotated. We don't have to bit banging and, and, and go uh, through all those pins to check if the value has changed, we can basically do whatever we want to do and only the moment when you start rotating the encoder, the changes in here will trigger interrupt and only then we start, we start counting. This is very useful, well, like we said, like we, there are not enough pins for us to do this because if we just do uh, encoders themselves, we're gonna consume eight pins and we will run out of uh, any available pins and we still want to use the button that is on those. There is a great way to connect multiple encoders using I squared C, and it's a project uh, uh, available on Tindy by Simon that con consists of a small boards where you can solder your, your uh, encoder, and it also contains a small PIC microcontroller to serve as a I squared C slave. And you can connect those in rows and matrices, you can do whatever you want. But unfortunately, each piece is um, 690 and we need four of them. So that would make the cost of just encoders around 28 bucks. And I mean, the whole project is supposed to be very cheap here. The screen was for just um, five bucks. And the encoders that I bought from AliExpress were uh, 23 cents each. So we have to figure out a better and cheaper way of doing that. Let's look into how encoders work inside. Because the first idea to allow multiple encoders would be to use multiplexing. Which in this case, like imagine, look at the uh, encoder, it basically consists of, you can imagine two switches there. 
Um, both of them are connected to input pin and then you have the output A and the output B. So what we could do is connect all the outputs A's from all the encoders together. Uh, same with output B, connect to each of them together and feed them into the microcontroller. And then the input pin from those encoders could be also connected to microcontrollers. So then we can basically select, do we want to check number zero? So we would put a high voltage here and then we'd see which of A or B uh, are on. And then same with D1, D2, D3, and basically keep circulating between all of those. But there is a small problem because encoders aren't just switches. Internally, there is basically a circle and it has contacts on the side. And the way how the encoder works, there are two connectors in here. One goes to A and one goes to B. So, and the pins on the circle are connected to the common pin. So when we rotate, what we detect is uh, either A is connected to the common or B is connected to the common or both of the, them are. And based on the, um, the shape or like of the combination of them and each consecutive step would have different combination, we can count, are we turning right? Are we turning left? And how many times have been turned? But you might notice a small problem. In one of the steps, it is actually possible to uh, for the points A and B to be on the same connector, which means they are shorted permanently. If you do not rotate it, it will stay that and it will shorten. So in this case, if we would use this, it's say the E0 is connected this way and it's being left on the point where both A and B are here. All the other encoders, it doesn't matter if we switch here, it would always indicate that both of them are connected. So we basically cannot do multiplexing because of how the encoders are built. Fortunately, digging through all my spare parts, I found the PCF8574 chip, which is an I2C 8-bit port extender. So that seems perfect because it has one additional thing. It supports interrupts. So in this case, what we can do, we can connect all the encoders to the digital inputs to the PCF and connect the PCF using the SDA and SCL pins to Xenons and basically use the I2C bus to query for the values. But because it has the interrupt pin, whenever any of those pins changes, it triggers an interrupt. And in this case, in a Xenon, we can use this pin to create yeah, our own interrupt handler. And whenever this interrupt hits, we will basically query the PCF about what, are, what is the current state of all the pins, calculate what is the state of all the connected encoders, and then basically save it. So with this setup, we have both saved the pins and we still have the capability of using interrupts and allowing Xenon to do all the other processing, you know, making music and things and not, use it, not spending the CPU cycles on just querying the encoders. This is what I end up with. We have four encoders, when you see on the other side, all their main connectors are connected together. They connected to um, here to 3v3 and each of those pins is connected to the I2C extender and it's connected to the Xenon through the uh, I2C. And this pin is the interrupt pin I mentioned that allows us to trigger interrupt every time it, the value actually changes. Now you could actually see that when I turn the knobs, I actually see the values change. So yes, this works. And now what's left is to actually solder the chip onto the board and create the connections for the rest of the synthesizer.
with this setup, we are just using basically one additional pin for the encoders because we're already using the two pins for the I squared C that goes currently to the Travis keyboard. So we're reusing those pins. We're adding the interrupt pin. And then for each of the four buttons, we will need additional uh, four wires. So the whole thing can be run with just additional five wires and that leaves us with a couple to spare. Again, thanks for watching and tune in for the next video whenever that will be. Thanks for watching.